As the photographer for more than 200 album covers, David Michael Kennedy knows that the creation of a cover is a real collaboration between the artist, the record company, and the photographer. Each has a vested interest in producing the best product, since a strong image of the artist vying for attention on the record racks can help record sales. Today we're shooting a group called Levert for Little Atlantic Records. Uh, the art director is Bob Deferin, and there's a kind of a loose concept. Uh, it's not really a gangster image per se, but it takes place in, in the late 20s, early 30s. Uh, the guys will be dressed in uh, pseudo-gangster outfits, more not businessmen of that period, but not your hard gangster with guns kind of look either. And they'll be standing in front of a 1933 Buick. Uh, down at the Brooklyn waterfront. As far as lighting the shot goes, it's very difficult for me to preconceive where each head is going to go. We have a basic idea of what we want it to look like, of the feel we want, but till we're actually there and we're mixing the daylight and the strobe, you don't ever really know exactly what you're going to need. Consequently, we bring three times what we think we might possibly need. And then when we get there, um, depending on the ambient light ratio to strobe ratios um, and the feel of the daylight and how we want to change it, then we start placing strobes. Uh, as far as today went, the first strobe we put up is to light the group, which was a five by uh, five and a half foot Phototech umbrella uh, with a Comet 2400 unit in that. That lights the group, and we try and balance that to the available light. In this case, the, the available light, the, the most important part of it was what it was doing in the sky and also in the background, it was kind of skimming down the street. Um, so the, the first problem is to balance that strobe light to the daylight, to bring the sky down about two stops dark, darker than normal. So it's just a nice, dark, rich sky. Uh, then once we get that on Polaroid film, you look at the whole image and you decide the areas that you want to bring up more, in which case you throw some strobe light in there, and also the areas that you may want to knock down, which we either do by goboing daylight or by increasing the overall strobe and knocking the ambient down today. Photographic considerations aside, the location photographer must also plan the logistics of the production so that the unexpected won't stop the shoot. But even the best planning sometimes isn't enough. In this case, a faulty generator threatened the entire day. It's impossible to cover everything 100%. You, you would make yourself totally crazy and budgets would go completely out the window. If, if you started, so you kind of, you, you have to do a little bit of a trade-off where you say, okay, these backup systems are really necessary and we have to bring them, and these other backup systems are just out of hand. Um, you, you can't cover everything. So then a lot of the creative thinking is how do you solve that problem that you can't cover with backup equipment? which is the generator, and we, we found someone who had electricity who, for a fee, would let us use their electricity. Hallelujah, we got water down here, Stucky. We were using the water primarily to add to the feel of the photograph. Uh, somehow, lower Brooklyn waterfront and the, the time period and the mood lended itself toward kind of a, a, a wet, colder kind of feel. Uh, also, the water in the ground does really nice things with spectral highlights. If, if you've got, in, in this photograph, it's really a very dark picture because you've got three black guys, they're wearing dark clothes, they're with a black car, uh, they're on a dark street. So there's a lot of dark, a lot, a lot of, of, of negative tones going on. And putting the water in the street gives the, the street a chance to pick up highlights and kind of pop some light back in, into the image. When, when you're shooting with a wide-angle lens, uh, the angle of view becomes much more critical than when you're shooting with longer focal length lenses in that the lens will distort and curve. Maybe in the, in the belt, maybe. 
Yeah, here it's beautiful. Great. Bob, take a look. See if you feel like we're losing too much car. Yeah. 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 Get a little uh, expression over there. Maybe we have some of the headlights showing it. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't. You can't have him just straight out of here. Yeah. Okay. Now where do we put? Where do we go with them? I would keep them in the middle because we're yeah. going to lose them because of the shortage. Yeah. So where? How do we do that? Let's kind of with slide. With 40 millimeter and the Hasselblad, you get. Virtually no distortion, uh, like a. It's almost equivalent to a 20 on a, on a 35 millimeter, and you know, when you get things close with a 20 millimeter, they tend to start spreading out. Uh, with the 40 and the Hasselblad, you don't see that nearly as much, but you do get around the edges a little bit of curves and things. So just by tilting the camera or moving a little bit, you begin to, to distort and get different feels from the picture, which is why with this particular shot, it took us so long to lock in. All right, here we go. Even with the 1980s whizzing by in the background, Kennedy's viewfinder sees only what he wants it to see, a recreation of a time long gone.